A lot of people are asking me how I hurt my shoulder, and some of my Patreon even told me to get a new hobby. You're going to see the video of what happened. Um, yes, you can ride this stuff. That's not a, like she wasn't doing anything super silly that was hard to ride. What's dangerous is this, the flipping over. Now, I have my wife there to hold on to her. She had a history of that, and I thought I got that out of her. And I've been on her back a bunch of times and this and that. And then she went right back to her baseline. So, as you can see, when I fall down on my shoulder, I rolled. And this is where I really hurt it. And I have always had a bad shoulder there. I dislocated it a bunch of times. So, but this is what today's video is about, guys. And the benefit of it and how I'm feeling now. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about today. Where I get the shoulder brace from. We're going to do some calculation. We're going to talk about the build. The magical button. And then the result that I got from all this. I took my shirt off to show you guys what it looks like. I typically don't like to wear it directly on my skin. I wear it on top of my sweaters and stuff like that. It's really good stuff. Um, they work really good just by themselves. They help with that. But the good thing about this one is it's got the flap. And then you can mount the stuff inside. It's got all kinds of places to hide things. Magic calculator. I love it. Now we have 3.2 volts. We're going to serial bolt batteries. That's going to give us 6.4 volts. They're 3500 milliamps each, which is 3.5 amps. Now the trick is there is another way to use a calculator for the one that don't know. I know my coils are just under 9 ohms. Uh, yeah, 9 ohms each, those uh, PCB coil. So if I take the resistance of my wire, which is about 0.3 of an ohms, um, I'm looking at about 8.5, 8.6 ohms. So I'm looking to get this at 8.6 ohms. So I'm going to cheat. You could enter it directly right here if you wanted to, but so we don't mess up with the formula. I'll just put 100 and 100. Enter. So that gives me 3.2. Let's go uh, 200, 6.6. .6. Let's go 300, 9.9. .9. So let's go 250, 8.3, 275. To 60, there you go. 260 is pretty close, right? Um, now we gonna put four of them things in parallel with one another, and that gives me 84 percent. So I'm still within my battery power, and I can go with four in parallel, that would be perfect. So that's another way to use the calculator. Don't worry about the gauze here because it, it won't work because we're, we change too many parameters, right? It only works with the 95 mil coil. So I hope you guys enjoy this particular part. There's a magic calculator use again. It's free on the Patreon. You can just go and download it. Uh, I just need to sign up for Patreon and then you can just get it when you're there. Let's have some fun with this build there. So basically, you got to solder all the wiring to your uh, your coils. I mean, they don't come pre-wired. And I like to put some heat shrink on it to, to protect it. Then you just got to play around and place them and see where, you know, where they would fit properly on your shoulder. It's a lot of thinkering around, right? I mean, it's just the way things are when you invent stuff. I mean, it's just sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's fun. I always enjoy it, right? And I like to share those ideas with people. And I will put the plan on that on a Patreon. Um, mounting the coil permanently onto the um, the brace itself posed the challenge. I hate sewing. I think that would be the perfect way of doing it to just be to use a thread and needle and, and sew it on. So I decided instead to uh, use a mechanical way, and I'll show you that in a second. The uh, box, as usual, you just got to clean it up, make sure everything fits inside, drill some holes for the wire. I use double-sided tape from Gorilla to uh, keep the stuff in, and that works really good for me. I use uh, shoe glue to mount the box onto the brace itself. Now there's the, I use a hole punch for leather. I made a hole. And then I got these screws and I made my own washers for them because the screws would go right through the fabric. Um, I like it. It was really painful to do because it was barely long enough. You had to compress the fabric really hard to get them in. 
and I put two screws, one in each corner, opposite corner, to hold it in place. And I got a lot of fancy tools. I'm, every time I need a tool, I just go get one. I just, just love that. Um, and then I, I finished them up, and I mowed them up, and I was pretty happy with the results. The switch was something else. Um, I couldn't figure out how to make it work. Uh, I thought I had a faulty one at first. So my meters, they, um, they're sourcing meters, and I was trying to source out of it, and I gave up, and I just went to get a 12-volt battery. So there's the button. I got them on uh, AliExpress. They're pretty good. And then I realized I had a 9-volt battery right there, which was a lot easier to work with. So I just used my 9-volt battery to test the, um, the button. And then my meter, I realized that there was uh, some kind of duty cycle on the button, so I decided to get my oscilloscope and give it a shot. Now, here it is, 100% duty cycle on the red. As you can see, we've got the 9 volts happening all the time, just beautiful. Then you push, the, uh, push it again and you get 75% uh, duty cycle. So it stays on for 75% of the time and off for 25. And then the next phase is 25% duty cycle. What do you think is going to happen now to the PWM when we're at 1% duty cycle, 1 hertz, for example, and then we're running the button on 75% duty cycle? That'll be a good... I'll show you that at the end of the video. The rest of the stuff is pretty straightforward, right? Once again, I mounted the button using uh, shoe glue and I put one screw and one washer in there to keep it in place while it dried up. Shoe glue is, is amazing that way. I like to use flux on my wire whenever I get a chance, especially if they're the cheap Chinese wire that are um, aluminum wire. Solder doesn't like to stick to that too much. I try to solder my switch directly to my battery holder but I was melting the plastic so that was not an option. So. The rest of the build, guys, is pretty straightforward after that. I make those videos to encourage people to modify and test and do stuff and give you some ideas. Um, we're having a blast at the Patreon. We're inventing all kinds of stuff together. But yeah, I mean, take this, and I'm telling you, it works. I mean, um, I've had major changes in my shoulder. I was peeking out. I was not getting better by any stretch of imagination. And then uh, after two days of using it, I've seen a huge change in my shoulder. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. But enough of that. The button, I used Shugu to put it on, like I said. And then um, I ran the length of the wire back to the coil from the controller because you got to go all the way around. And then I used um, a mesh, like a cover, to make it look good and actually protect the wires a little bit too. It's not like this thing's got a rough by any stretch of imagination, but it just makes it look a little bit better, a little more finish. It's a good prototype. I've already got a few people asking me about it. I'm not opposed to building them for some people. Um, if you're interested in something like this, let me know. I think if you have a shoulder injury, you know how bad it is and how long it takes to heal. And if this can help you and make it heal faster, just, it is worth the problem uh, to build them. I mean, like, give it a shot. Join the Patreon, try it out. If you really don't have the tools and you really need one, just hit me up on my email there and let's see if we can work something out. At the end of the day, I love it. And I'm going to keep that one for myself for sure because I have a constant injury on my shoulder. It just never goes away. I mean, I popped them out of their joint. I don't know how many times now. And uh, if you got that problem, you know exactly what I'm getting at. Next week, we're going to be talking about something pretty cool. I'm going to talk about the mat. So stay posted for that two weeks from now. So now let's talk about the magic button. And what do you think is going to happen with when I put it on 25% duty cycle, 75% duty cycle, when the PWM is already at micro pulsing? And I'm going to talk about that too in more detail in a second here.
the moment you've all been waiting for. So, as you can see, I still have some work to do to finish this off over here properly with the wire sticking out like that. I'm not too sure I'm going to do that yet. If you have some ideas, just send in a comment. Just don't be shy. There's no crazy ideas. Just ideas are ideas. Bad ideas lead to good ideas. A crazy idea leads to a sane idea. It's usually where I got my ideas. Okay, so the question is, I have my ZKPP2 inside. Turn it on, and it's too bright for the screen, unfortunately, so you're going to have to take my word for it. So right now, I'm at 5% duty cycle, so I'm micro-pulsing this at 5% duty cycle, and 14 hertz. There's no reason why 14 hertz, it's just, it's in my head, I love 14 hertz, I feel that it's the magical one, and, you know, it works really well. Okay, as you can see, the screen is on, and it's basically doing a 5% duty cycle. If I hit it, it's on for 75% of the time and then off, on and then off, on. Now if I hit it again and put it on the 25% uh, duty cycle, it's on for 25% of the time. When it's on, the PWM is doing its magic and then when it's off, it's off. So what's the purpose of this? makes your battery last forever and you're getting the full benefit of it especially if you're wearing this thing like I do pretty much all day long from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to bed at night I just got it on and I usually leave it either on the blue setting or the green setting now I was worried that it would burn out the PWM but it didn't because it's been working like this for quite a while I know I mentioned this many times in my videos, but the ZKPP2 and the ZKPP2K, which is the same thing, one without the case, one with the case, they're amazing, amazing. So 6.4 volts, and there it is. You're probably wondering how many gauze it makes now, so let's have a look. So you're not gonna believe it. Um, I went up there and put my gauze meter and I put the duty cycle up to 50% so I could uh, have my gauze meter capture how many gauze and I was going to put that on video and um, it died. So thank God I had my gauze meter on hold and it kept the last reading that it did so I was able to take a picture of it to show it to you guys and as we speak right now my batteries are on charge which brought in the question hey is straight math why can't I just add that to my calculator so I could guess how long the batteries will last on different setting this made some change to the mighty calculator and I think you guys are gonna like this because if we start doing a lot of stuff with batteries it's gonna be fun to see what we can project so I added this function right here you have nothing to do at all you just need to enter the duty cycle you intend to run your uh, PWM at and it will tell you based on the information you enter up here and everywhere else what you're looking at and I did the test and well it has to be pretty accurate because uh, it's math right so as long as you don't enter garbage in you don't get garbage out so in my case I was running 5% duty cycle I ran it most of the time in the red but then the last day or so I've been doing the blue uh, mostly today all day I've been doing the blue so I'm looking at three days about about like eight nine hours a day let's just go eight hours a day right so that'd be 24 hours of total use my battery just died by the way put them on the charger and they're totally empty um, like even if we went nine hours a day that's 27 hours so yeah I'm between 24 and 27 hours of use on this so I would say this is a very good remember this guy is like a simulator right so as you can see right here I'm gonna upload that onto the patreon to replace the old uh, calculator we'll just get rid of the old one we'll just use this new one right here so yeah so when you use the power button on high medium and low which is the 100 percent duty cycle of that one 75 and 25 it gives you the total hours you'll be able to use it at right same thing here 
if the battery was on 100% of the time, uh, with 100% duty cycle, I mean, you would have one hour of, you know, power on those coils. At 5% duty cycle, you get 23.6, so 24 hours, right? So as we change this here, everything lowers down, right? And it has to be linear, guys. Like, this is a straightforward thing. So if you're running 25% duty cycle, you're looking at, you know, 5, 6, and 8 hours. At 1% duty cycle, this is all long you'd be looking at, right? Uh, if you go in green, you'd be looking at 207 hours. Um, micro, I'm going to make a video soon about micro um, pulsing at 1% hertz and how uh, the coil still gives you the full gauze, right? And this is the 100 millisecond that we're talking about. It's the sweet spot. So you could micro pulse at 1%. I'm going to prove that um, it's really difficult because my meter is not quick enough, but if I can get my oscilloscope probe to work, um, they'll be, we'll be able to see it on the oscilloscope for sure. Anyway, stay tuned for that. So guys, I hope you're as excited as me. I mean, the stuff we're doing on this channel is incredible and on the Patreon is just buzzing with activity. Um, I'm having some of the most wicked conversation with people. I know I'm excited. I mean, uh, I have a ton of other stuff on the work. I just ordered new metal. At the time the video is being posted, I probably have that new metal with me. And I want to thank one of my Patreon for that. I mean, like, I've been looking for the genuine article for quite a while, and um, he found it, and he let us know, and. I jumped on the bandwagon and got some. You don't know what Mew Metal is? Well, it's going to change your life. I mean, this is like the answer to so much stuff I have. Um, oh, I'm excited. I'm like super pumped. A ton of people have been building my, um, my, my design, my prototype. They've added to it. I mean, I'm having Zoom chat with a bunch of people. Some of them I'm chasing. We just can't get along, like we'd not get along, but we just, our timing just, you know, there's all kinds of weird time zones and stuff like that. But what a blast, what a journey. And I want to thank you all. I mean, to the bottom of my heart, some of the comment I get on the Patreon from you guys just sometimes just brings me to tears. Uh, some of the stories I hear about the people who've been helping and stuff like that, it's just amazing. I mean, I mean, if like, even if I was to quit right now, I would say that I've overachieved my goal with this, uh, this thing. I'm not saying we're quitting, we're not, we're gonna keep on going. But um, yeah, it's been amazing. The shoulder thing, my batteries are charging right now. Uh, I'm really proud of it, really, really, really proud of it. Uh, I'm very, very happy. Anyway, I love you guys. You stay safe. And then uh, next week we'll be talking about the mat. And I'm going to demystify a few things here. Okay, we'll talk to you guys soon.